All right, and we are on. Cool. Don't you need to be to save uh, episode number? Oh, yeah. This is episode number 59, I think, of uh, Music Real Talk with Marvin. Yeah, 59. There we go. It's been a long day. Jesus Christ. All right, but we're doing this. Very, very excited to do it. Uh, so you, you actually told me to tell you to remind Yeah, what's her name? About some, like you, you sent me a name of a girl I didn't recognize. And like, I have to talk about this. And right. I don't know who she is. So who All is right. she? It's going to be short. But uh, so I've been talking. Jazzy is a, is a magazine slash website. It's a big jazz magazine website, one of the biggest ones. Mm-hmm. And they had a fusion issue maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And we weren't included. And a lot of people that nobody knows and are not fusion who are included. Yeah. So I contacted the guy and been time to get him to publish something about a sense. But he added me to his spam list, so I get all the stuff they're doing. They just had their Kenny G on the cover. They usually have like New York jazz kind of people, mm-hmm. but but I guess Kenny G. G yeah, it's like, it's like New, York, New York guitar players that own an electric guitar, like that own a Strat, they're like Fusion. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm talking about I get all the stuff that's not Fusion. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. just saying I get, I get all the stuff they do. I, I remember, they had, and they always have like stupid shit going on. They had an issue that was dedicated to Miles Davis culinary preferences. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you mentioned that on the podcast. Yeah, we talked about it before. Yeah, we yeah. talked about it before. Anyway, they, they have a podcast now. Uh-huh. And the headline was some chick's name, Swedish jazz star. And... <laughs> And on the and that she was that was her interview. Anyway, I googled her name, and somebody should let Google know who she is. She's not on Google. She well, I found her eventually, but she's not one of the top results. And you have to even even when you is it like you have to put like jazz singer. You can't even put jazz. It's like she it's, it's just no. It's not a common name. Wow. It's she didn't. She just released her first album. She's young. She has maybe like, I don't know, like 20 followers on Facebook and two on Twitter. Like something like that. Like insane. But jazz, Swedish jazz star. And, uh, and it's like, I don't think you know what, what this word means. Uh, jazz. Yes, in the, in oh, and jazz. she's also, wait, she's also from, um, she's also from Finland. So I don't think you know what any of these words mean. Jazz, <laughs> Swedish, or star. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think you understand what, what happens when you combine them together, but not this lady. Do, do, yeah. do you know? And I was listening to her stuff after I found her website. She has one of those websites that, uh, you know. Like that, a WordPress? Yeah, but like not a good one. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's something that you do on your own, but not, mm-hmm. not, um, not the Israeli company that everybody uses now. That makes it look good. What's the name of this company? Uh, yeah, I forget. But I know what you're talking about. We used them too for a second for the GPT. Right. So, yeah, it just looks so. L- Wix. 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 Yeah, so not Wix. Just something that looks like it's been done. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, you, when MySpace wasn't enough and you had to get your own website. Right, right, right. Everything looks like it's like modeled after neon lights of the web. Yeah, it's just terrible. So, I just thought it was hilarious to see that. And, the, the, the lack of integrity. Is there anybody on. who like picks up a jazz? First of all, no. Nobody, nobody reads that shit. It's like there's zero people who read it. Uh, or listens to it. Or listen or to listen, it. Yeah. yeah. But so it's, it's literally, it's a scam between the advertisers and the publication. Yeah. Because, but I, because all, the publications exist only because the advertisers believe that they have some traffic no i don't think so i am the more we do it and the more like after we sank all our money into it like idiots i just Mm -hmm. think 
that my first theory was right. That everybody knows that the only people that read or look at those magazines, nobody looks at them. But it's a way for people to get gigs in places that don't understand not those magazines. From. Yeah, so I told you, like I remember... Um, but how does the magazine itself survive? From the advertisers, and the only people that advertise there is people that want to get their musicians. It's amazing because their whole their whole model must be people advertising once. No, you but, don't get no, but, no, 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 no. So you have you have people like us that are idiots, right? That's what in, or like in her, people. you think she's gonna sink money into it, like uh, so again, and again, and again. I think it's not. I think it's for record labels. I think it's only for just record labels that just keep advertising, because even Gil. Uh, gear people don't advertise well anymore because I was talking to the guys from Theowani and I was talking to the guys from the Adario and they said they don't do magazines. Sure. Why, why would they? Um, so it's only for people, it's only for, it only makes sense for labels so they can go to a place in Romania and say, look, uh, Downbeat Magazine said Jazz Star, one of the brightest voices in Europe. It's weird, the perspective of like the gear people and the music people with magazines is so fundamentally different. We're so much, we're so less gross because, you know, like we look at these people as, you know, he might think what I do is beautiful. You know, it's like that, that's the whole thing when you're a band, when you're a musician. You, you look at a magazine like mm, the readers that like enjoy the, the fusion issue might probably will really enjoy my music it's like i really want to get them into my catalog and like you know like just get more people into my playing and listen there's something naive and pure and beautiful about it but it's like when you're sweet water or some shit and it's just like like it's like a corporate meeting and you need to like move x amount of like condenser microphones this quarter but, but doesn't that seem to you actually like we're more like the gear company because we think Oh, we'll find something that's interesting to the people that read this. And we'll, you know, it will be a win-win for us and the readers. And what those musicians do, they think, musicians, those labels do, they're like, nobody reads the shit. It doesn't matter. The only reason why it matters is because we can go to this festival in Poland and send our people to play there for 5,000 bucks in front of old people, you know, because it's um, funded by the government, local government. And by the, some cartel people that want to launder the money, yeah. and and they're or gonna tax pay for your money in some broken economy where they like yeah yeah well I said it's for government government governments yeah. don't have money right it's only taxpayers right. sure so it's and then we're gonna play for was like we did in uh, in Indiana but mm -hmm. we played for I don't know fifteen Marvin fans and sixty uh, ninety year olds yeah. You know, that was quite a scene. And yeah, it was just, it was just weird. And that was the festival and nobody, you know, and nobody would complain because those people are fine, you know, they're, they're fine. Yeah. That's it's the like, weirdest and, thing. And the, and I, the people I, that come out, they don't People have care. a very different imagination. When you say jazz festival, I think people imagine something very different than the, the reality of yeah, they imagine jazz maybe festivals. What, like even I can imagine weather report like, shows playing in front Montreux. of all those hippies. I remember, yeah. I remember like seventies, you know, seventies kind of thing where jazz was kind of getting mainstream and it's just thousands of people digging it. Not like these fucking funnel cake boots. It's it, it's, like, it's, like, it's instead instead of uh, instead of like in the seventies. But we had people on acid in the crowd. They have people in their seventies that have acid, <laughs> but they need thumbs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the difference. That that what happened. It's really, it's really fucking sad. It's really pathetic. Um, again, yeah. I'm not saying I hope the guy that books the festival doesn't hear it because I want to go back for this year. But it's, it's just you know, it's just a pay. It's. We I mean, had it's fun. Not, it's payday. Yeah, yeah, it's a payday. They and it's, and they it's okay, them. but it's just so ridiculous. Like the infiltration of it's it's a few things that happened at once. For namely, people just not giving a shit about jazz. I think also 
the fact that big bands only exist now really in like high schools and colleges and they have to have big bands all the time on these festivals for some fucking reason yeah you know what i mean it's like you just have all these fucking like it, it like i don't care even if it's really good which it never is but like if you're like a a great college band or even or worse a great high school band and you're like your high school got you to play a festival it ruins the fucking vibe to have all these kids and their moms taking pictures there like nobody that goes out to a festival that's into music wants that shit infiltrating the vibe of hanging out I, I, do, I like high school kids in the audience because they, they are really no, into no, the music. No. I like them in the audience. I'm just saying. It's like, I don't like the, the fact city. that they have like, they always put like, they put them on a big stage because yeah. they know that like, they're going to bring a busload of, of like moms. their, of moms yeah, but, and But we don't really care. Grandmas. But we don't really care what festivals. We don't care how many people you bring. I know it's just it's a silly thing. It's like they think it's a community outreach. It's they're trying to do a lot of things that are very unrelated to the music. And, well, they and, need to have. Okay, so I think I think that you you look. Okay, I'll tell you what I think they do it. Mm -hmm. Right, I think we need to justify the funding. So if they can be like, hey, we went to this uh, inner city school, <laughs> big Save band. the zebra. Uh, Stop and global that, warming. Well, that, yeah, but that's why we have li young lions all the time, right? So we can be like, here, we're, we're developing the scene in the city. The young lions are playing at the solar operated stage. Yeah, they do. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly that. It's exactly that. Ride an you know, orca. To the <laughs> and you know, I, I had this thought, it's not a new thought, but I've been reading, I thought like we've been reading this uh, uh, Israeli uh, fancy magazine, right? Yeah like the extreme, extreme left fancy magazine, and it's... <coughs> yeah, I'll you got super woke? I'll tell you later. No, I'll tell you later about one thing that I read, but it's like the, what I'm going to tell the people is that the art stuff that I read, though. Mm -hmm. um, this, they write a lot about Israelis, art, Israeli artists that make their art, like modern art in Europe, and it's always super anti-Israel. Mm -hmm. And what it made me think of, and it's so silly, and it's and it's just it's so unavoidable that those people that are anti-Israel, like nobody likes them in Israel. Sure. You know what I mean? Like we have like three people in Israel that like them. Like nobody likes them. Of course, that's yeah, very like, strange. Yeah, it's obviously nobody likes uh, people like that. It's not like in the states that it's. You can be like, I hate the state, the state is the world. And people are like, yeah, still you have like a big chunk of people. It's like, no, but not a lot of people in Israel. And, you know, we, we grew up through terror attacks and everybody, a lot of people in the army. It's like, it's just, it, it's, not, it's not popular over to hate the country. Okay. Right. And so they go to Europe where people hate the country. Okay. But it was like, it's like, everybody, nobody can really live all the time in a place where everybody hates them. Right. That's what I was thinking. And I'm trying to think about, oh, and that, that was one thing that I thought. And the second thing that's also connected to it was, I'm trying to remember, oh, this doctor was uh, apparently they just came up with a study that said aspirin is not good for old people. It makes them get more cancer or whatever and like it doesn't help them with uh, heart diseases and they used to give it to ton of old people until now and this yeah doctor, everybody everybody takes like one a day yeah yeah so this it's a blood thinner yeah so no so apparently there was just a new study that came out said no so this doctor in israel the famous doctor I was like what the fuck like i've been giving it to people right and now i have to tell them i need to figure it out so he was going over studies and he wrote a book about it about how many of the studies are shit mm -hmm. and how the way that they did, you know, with uh, subprime mortgages that they put all of them together and are like, no, this is not a lot of shitty things. This is a one bundle. This is one bundle that's good. So he said that a lot of the metadata that everybody loves, it's like it's just taking a lot of shitty studies and putting them together and pretending that it's good. But it's like, no, it's just a lot of shitty studies mm -hmm. together. And he was given a lot of examples there. Obviously, medicine has a lot of stuff that works. But 
he was complaining about how you know, people have a pressure to publish stuff, to be professors, and that's it, because it affects them. I mean, look in your field, look in the world of content and music. Like, what percentage of that shit works in a situation? You know no, I mean? Nothing. Like, nothing, none of it, none of it. You, like, all the musicians I know that, that like, are in, are in bands that open for us obsessively watch YouTube instructional videos. Zero of it filters into their playing. All right, you know, so it's, it's, it's an incredible thing. It's like you know, the, the, there's there is a pressure to make you know to make up shit to make that content. Sounds yeah, good. no, but also to make content. That was like what you're saying. We have a pressure to make content, and they also have this pressure. So they make all that stuff, but a lot of it is just not good, and it's, and not everybody can have a scientific breakthrough, right? right? Most of the things are worthless, and then people obviously lie, and people. You know, same thing with music. And, and, but the way I want to connect it is this. But the problem is that the idea behind it was a pretty good idea. They said, well, if you're a professor, you should publish stuff and you should study and you should be on top of your shit, right? But what it creates is this inflation of shit. <laughs> well, I mean, I think also, with, in, specific to the world of content, the thing that always makes me laugh is how everybody is being pragmatic with the way they title their content. Like they go with what works. So if you try to find the best seven or three or 10 of anything, you can't find anything anymore. Because yeah, everything like is the top million. three ways of doing yeah. this. The one time I did something that you wouldn't believe. So it's like just the way the tag game worked, it was like this weird evolution where, I mean, I don't think you could. When I was a kid, there were a couple of REH instructional videos that were objectively great videos. There was Scott Henderson melodic rhythm. Blew my mind, really. It's like he, he gave away so much uh, in, in that hour. You know, talking about for a, for a metal person or something like that, it just it starts you on this path where you're just finding out what words mean, like displacing rhythms and like all this stuff, like just talking deeply into the camera, like the way you would talk into somebody who knows something, it was incredible. That was one, a handful of other ones. Joe Pass had one that was good. I don't think you could just randomly find them again on YouTube, unless they go viral for some reason. They don't, though. You know, they don't. There's just too much stuff right now. So you, if you give... Also, they like don't fit the give, format. Yeah, they don't. But if you give like... Stuff like if you grow up now and you give Rick Beato equal weight to that, like, dude, you're so fucked. No, you you give it way more weight because uh -huh. it's 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 fit, it's, the, it's fit the format. It, yeah, and it's millions of times more successful. Yeah, and so what I, the way I want to connect the the Israeli artist and Europe and 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 that stuff. Oh, and the modern stuff was so stupid. Everything is like, you know, like. And she's in Berlin, so she has to shit on Germany too, obviously. And it's, <laughs> but um, no, but where I want to connect it is that the people have ideas that seem good and necessary, mm -hmm. but the, but there is something about you know the like uh, Bukowski has the genius of the crowd, but this is a different genius of the mediocre people. That there is this type of person that just knows how to make the system work for them, and they just <laughs> take over the shit. Like, look, jazz school, okay, was always silly, but in the beginning, it was all those famous musicians. Yeah, right? Brecker, like John Schofield, they were all in school together, right? Yeah, well, and the people that taught school was all right. famous jazz musicians. It was basically all the jazz musicians that needed a job. And then it became like, the administrators, like the people that have... Well, that's... that's now that's you have exactly to have a PhD. I, I understand PhD. what you're saying. I mean, it's not like Bukowski was talking about just... I mean, how it is a genius. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's about how much average people hate, hate gifted people. But uh, there is a type of talent of mediocrity where, where they really understand the ladder and how to, how to move up. And they, un they just understand the system and they understand how to just notch their way through it. But they have nothing to say. And L like people like us have, have no 
have no chance of getting no. in. And Not into those systems. No yeah, way. and then it's, it's too... When Veta was connected well, with Well, it's Lady. like any, anybody who has any talent can't fit in there because just by the, by the merit of them being there, they expose everybody around them. You can't have a person that can play in a so context you had, like that. So in Israel, you had somebody like Jonathan Geffen, for example, right? Or somebody like Aviv Geffen, even his son. Somebody that really goes against the mainstream of the time. Mm-hmm. And then those people that go up on those people just start was okay, we need also somebody to support those anti-establishment people. But then it just became like, it just becomes this establishment anti-establishment. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. It just became those people that are comfortable, you know, that are going around just seeing the same. It's like, they're not saying anything brave anymore because all around them, they surround themselves with people that think exactly the same. And, and this just happens like, Modern music, like, yeah, Stravinsky, people, modern musicians love talking about Stravinsky, how people had a riot at Ride of Spring, but nobody has a riot at them, you're just, you're just with a bunch of other idiots, like the guy that you send me playing guitar. Mm -hmm. The avant-garde Japanese guy. Yeah, nobody nobody is having a riot because this idiot is playing guitar like, like, you know, it's just, it's like he's surrounded by other idiots like that. And just yeah, there, take... there's, no, there's no bravery in it. It's, yeah. it's not so going just, against anything. All the mediocre people just take over everything. All, every, we, feel, we feel it to the brim. It's well, that's in... the cancer. We see, we see it everywhere. You see, I mean, you see it in every, whenever you have a great player, Coltrane, and then all the people that sound like Coltrane, right? That like try to make that do the same exact thing. It's like you're not going against anything. That, that went against everything. You know, he, he paid the price for that, for that, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, I saw it with, um, my wife's a government employee, uh, and the way that promotions work in the government is just like, it's the ball rolling a notch forward. You know, if you're a terrible employee, you're not going to get a promotion, but there is a time where people retire and everybody just goes one notch up. And all you got to do is just, you know, you, you, like you don't fuck up too much, obviously, but like, you know, most people just kind of advance and advance and advance. And, and, and like the, the, for the people at the very, very top eventually fall because they retire. They don't want to work anymore. And it's just the next person takes over. And the jazz administration works exactly the same exactly way. Exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, because at, at a well, certain I, point, at a certain point, the secretary you know, becomes the CEO. And that's pretty much where we've been since, I would guess, the 90s. Yeah, because systems... The guy that made the coffee is now running the company. Yeah. Systems, uh, the problem is that systems have to work like that because sometimes you would have three geniuses in, in a span of five years and then zero in the span of 25. Right. And it's just, especially in music like ours, that it's just... You know, we're less and less people doing it and caring about it. So we, we just get less good people coming yeah. out and then the other reasons. But yeah, it's, it's crazy. I don't remember who was that person that said it, but there is this kind of law in, uh, especially in governments and in armies, that if you're be- it's like if you're better, you get to the next job. And if you're better, they give it to the next job and get to the next job until you suck. And then you stay at the job that you suck at for life. Right. Yeah. So everybody, you so, advance to the job you you're incompetent. At. So basically, everybody stays at the, doing the job. I, I think that's at. actually Dilbert, but yeah. Yeah, it's probably is Dilbert. Uh, Scott <laughs> Adams. Yeah, it's Adams. just it's just so it's so obviously true. Yeah. And insane. Yeah, because that's a, that's naturally where you would get stuck. Yeah, because if you get because if you're good, we're gonna keep 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 pushing you up to a different yeah, job, yeah. give you different <laughs> responsibilities. Yeah. Um, unrelated, completely unrelatedly, I showed uh, our bassist John uh, the bounce that I sent you of a uh, headless chicken with uh, the edited. Want... Wait, edited did you bass. on the phone or text? Do you want to read me what he said? No, no, I talked to him on the phone after oh, I sent okay. it to him, and he said, uh, "Dude, I listened to Headless Chicken. The percussion sounds so good." that's like what what was the name of robocop was it john murphy or murphy (laughs) that's like 
Yeah. That's like after that scene where he gets shot like a thousand times that he wakes up and he just doesn't acknowledge that he's half robot now. <laughs> <laughs> just keeps walking around, banging his wife with his robot dick, just not fighting crime, just like living his life. Look in the mirror, it's like, looking, looking ripped today. <laughs> Good hair day. <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> it's really humiliation porn, what you're doing to him and he's playing. I can't believe, and then he's like, oh, nice drapes. Nice <laughs> shit. Pillows look, look comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 the bass in that song. I wouldn't even know. You know, it's so crazy. Nobody even... would. Nobody can play it. It is. It, it's I, it's I like even. Be, I would just say, I'm trying to think if it was me, like it was. If I was in the situation, obviously I would never get to the situation. But just if it was, if you sent me something like that, I would be like, no, it's it's weird. Yeah. It sounds weird. But I but I did send you something like that. Oh, and you said it sounds part? great. What no, I mean. with, with that song, with the bass. It, it's your music. It's a part of your, your music. You're like, yeah, this is better than what that was. Yeah, but if you send me something like with a saxophone, with my yeah, playing, no, I, 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 I would be like, that sounds weird. Yeah, I would be like, that, that's, what, what are we doing here? But I, yeah, I mean, when I hear a bass... I would just go, I would say, I would bass, play it again. It's not, I, when I hear bass on our album, the first thing I do is I First fix, of all, you usually don't. <laughs> you well, say, you say, on the album, hey, man, I, don't, I don't hear it like Engineer, it, turn it down. <laughs> yeah, but I, I edit everything, you know, I, I edit the time. And then when I listen to the back, I'm like, yeah, but like, are those the notes I would play? So I change some of the notes. And then I listen to it again with the notes and the time. I'm like, yeah, but are those the rhythms I would choose? So I change the rhythms. And it's like, yeah, but... With those rhythms, those notes don't work anymore. So I change the notes again. Like we need to get some more articulation. So, and it's just, it's like a whole process. You sometimes and take stuff from different songs for the bass. From yeah, I have taken stuff from different albums. Oh really? Uh, yeah. For this one too? No, no, not for this one. Uh, but I have done it in the past. Yeah, I was like, I just I can't different. fucking I can't find a G that's long enough, you know. And, uh, oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Only the bass. I don't know why. I think it's because it's direct. You can, go, you can get away with it. No. <laughs> no, because, yeah, I, you, can, you can get away with it. There's I, no I room. You can leave a space. That's the yeah. one thing people don't understand. Like, like if, you, if you leave a space when you're editing drums, you have to find that room sound that that space goes in somewhere or it's no, going to no, sound true. really strange. Like with saxophone, if, you, if, you, if I even move a little bit too much from the microphone, it sounds like you can hear like something is wrong. Right. It, just like it, it falls away from the mix. With, with direct, it's not really like that. Yeah. Um, you know, no, but, right. I'm, but I'm saying even if you take my notes and just mix them together, mm -hmm. it, just, it would not work. It no, can't it work. would sound weird. It, would sound it weird. can't work because I articulate the notes in a certain way and then the volume is a certain way, so it, it won't mix in, an, in any way that could, in, you know, it's like it won't, it just it doesn't work like that with saxophone or with yeah. guitar. It wouldn't yeah. work, it wouldn't work with John if his ideas made, no more, it made more sense, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's not even that, it's a, I think it's more a matter of uh, fingerprint than it is uh, than it is instrument uh, or phrasing. I think somehow when there's a very strong face inside the notes, you know, and the group, and because you can't really, you don't really put a lot of character and fingerprint into one short note, right? It's like it's into a, a few notes or a note you do something to. But it's really in your playing. It's in something. It takes it takes like a few seconds of playing to really get to this place where you see the face. Not seconds, but, milliseconds. Mm, Listen, me and you, we, the two of us do it in every phrase. No, in every phrase, but it's not in every note, right? So if you take our notes, the <laughs> playing disappears. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like if you would make MIDI out of us, the the playing would disappear instantaneously. It doesn't sound like us anymore. So it's this weird in-between state where, 
I mean, I don't know. It's to me, it still kind of sounds like him, in a way. <coughs> some of the parts. If if you heard somebody playing like that, you would never think it's him. <coughs> True. I don't know. We'll see. I don't. This. I, I. I. I think that this is a call to action for him to rise to the occasion and learn how to play like that. I. I I'm going to take the optimistic approach on this one. I think it's just it's too far from where it is. We'll see. Anyway, it's interesting. I mean, I can't believe we're talking about this publicly. It's very no. Strange. I listen. I have stuff. I have stuff that I think he can do better. But I think he is capable of doing better. But I just. I don't know why he's not doing it. And I think he can do it now. I think it's just like a brain switch. Yeah. But some stuff that you did here is just that technically is just. It's. It's not on a different. The melody was on different plane. This is not the melody. It's like improvising fat as it's improvising in the spirit of the melody. Yeah, I mean, more complicated rhythms. Honestly, I I wouldn't be able to do this for drums. I don't have that kind of vision. Like when I try to put together drum stuff, it's just ever it does it better than me intuitively. You know what I mean? Like I, I just don't have the vision for it. But with yeah, bass, I also un- I really understand what needs to happen with drums, unless I see it. But even when I see it, it's like I don't know. I just don't care. It's like two ka ka ka. ka. It's like yeah. But uh, honestly, like if you had to put together the bass, do you think you could? Not as well as you do. Yeah, but I, I feel mean, like I, I, I feel like I do have some imagination to what it would do. Like. I, I at least I imagine, let's say, I imagine the type of lines, well, what time we should have. Like, we talked about it. Like, that's, that's how it really started, right? Because you sent me the thing that you did with him. And I was talking to you about it. And then you were like, oh, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah. Right? That's how it started with Freeman. Yeah, because I, I thought I was done editing the whole album. Uh, and yeah. And then I, I listened back. I was like, okay, guess I'll go, go back in. It's there's something that makes a lot of sense about Paul McCartney said it, and that really influenced me back then. It's still something I, I always took to heart where he said like on Beatles albums, he would always track the bass last after the whole mix was done to find out what space was left for the bass to do the most it can do, you know? And, and I don't mean the most like shred over it. I mean, you know, to, to really fit, but, but have a part that's not so basic, just roots. And, um, I think the way this album started, I was I was editing the basically his playing the way he played, just tightening up the rhythms, and now kind of at the end rethinking it and doing stuff that's a little bit more tight with the drums, reining it in a little bit, and then on some songs and especially the faster stuff, just really going going full like you know plastic surgery on it, uh, giving him Kendall face. Yeah, it's weird. I, I don't know. I don't know what that does psychologically to a person to to withstand that. That's. It's, but I don't. It seems like he has all, all the, you know, the tools to handle it. Yeah, I would be like, no, 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 no. I would be like, no, man. It's like what it doesn't. I would just. I don't. I just, it's weird. It's like I would never let it happen if it was me. Yeah. What did I? I saw an interview with Gene Simmons yesterday, just because I'm like awake at odd hours feeding a baby and uh, just clicking on shit. Uh, And first of all, he was talking, he had that thing, David Lee Roth had it too, where it's like they've been famous for so long, like that they were famous before YouTube, like before yeah. People were taking like long form interviews. So I think like when you're doing an MTV interview, you could like get away with saying like a seven second thing without defending it and sounding kind of deep. And uh, then the camera would pan off and they'll show your house or something, or you'd be with like babes, like mm-hmm. in the back of a limousine. And it's just, you brushed to the backwards. But he was saying like there are seven notes and there are eight notes in music. Do I mean for ti do? Do is the same do, so it's really seven notes. It's like you know, you can do amazing things with it, like numbers, like zero, zero to nine is all you need. Zero is invented by the Arabs, you know that. 
And then he was like, yeah, and zero and one, all of the artificial <laughs> intelligence is based on that. Uh, and uh, then he just, the camera kind of stayed on him. <laughs> it was really <laughs> awkward because he was not like on MTV crib saying something <laughs> crazy. It was like in a podcast, you know, and you can still see him. <laughs> it's like, dude, he's like grandpa. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then he was saying how Lady Gaga has the goods because she sang with Tony Bennett and also Amy Winehouse has the goods. They're great. And then the next person who's great and keep an eye on is Billie Eilish. And uh, and I was just like, dude, they fucking let anybody be famous. What a low level, <laughs> basic bitch, piece of shit, unintelligent, rich douchebag. Like I, like how can you be a fan? He was talking about his. Isn't he one friendship. of us? Wasn't he born in Haifa or something? Yeah, he's Jewish, but that, no, no, that, he's like Israeli. It could be, but but I, I mean that it certainly. And I wouldn't be I wouldn't be proud of it. He likes Billy Eilish. No, no, I'm not uh, proud of it at all. I'm just thinking. Yeah. Uh, uh, but maybe not, maybe we used to control something. These <laughs> these people that used that you know, you thought they were badass. Like you didn't, but like, you know, kids, yeah. guns and roses, like all these people like you thought they were a part of something, like that rock meant something at some level. But at the end of the day, they were just these Californians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like all they wanted was to be in an award ceremony. It was just dudes. It was just, it, it wasn't even dudes. They wanted to like, they, 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 they wanted to be a part of Hollywood. They, they wanted to like dress up. And I mean, that's not surprising when you look at Kiss, I guess. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it's like, they're so into the fame and whoever comes next who's also into the fame. They're just like, like yeah, this, this person's great. It's like, how can, how, can, uh, how can serious musicians listen to the shit coming out right now and like, you know, think it's great? Billie Eilish is great. What's not great it, about it? Not even serious musicians. I was like, yeah, like you said, rock and roll. Mm -hmm. It's just... It's just weird to think about Rage Against the Machine listening to Billie Eilish, you know? I know. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. They all hey, dude, had, like, dude put, put on this 17 year old girl. Well, are we listening to Taylor Swift, too? Yeah, it's <laughs> like, Flea, like it's, do they hang out, Flea and Taylor? Do they, and, like, do they, all these people, like. Do they listen to We Like Short Shorts? And uh, whatever other song Taylor Swift has. She likes flip flops. You know, you're so old that that pop, like, probably nobody even gets it anymore. Oh, that's true. That's such a, that's like <laughs> your first song. What that song does she have now? That is like, that's your like new hip, like, uh, Taylor pop Swift reference, song. but it's like 15 years old. <laughs> no, Taylor Swift song. Yeah. She no, what? like short, short. She's, no, but she's still famous. So yeah, that's when Taylor Swift was in high school. She's like yeah. our age. Okay, so. <laughs> And she's not that age, but yeah. Yeah. Which is like almost 30 probably. Yeah, so wait, so what uh, what song did you have recently? I don't know. I don't know anything about Taylor Swift. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, all these people are into each other because they're just hanging out with other famous people. Licking, <laughs> like, just circle jerking each other. Uh, it, like, you know, you have to do it. You have to, like, you have to just keep bending the knee to each other. It's like, oh, you're great. No, you're great. And it was, he literally said, like, I love what Bruno Mars is doing with like, you know, real old R&B. And he was, he was literally talking about that <gasps> songs. Like I got fillets, like my doors unlocked, yeah. come to my house. Uh, where like that guy from NPR. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you yeah. know, I got fillets. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I, I, we probably need to wrap this up cause I, I, I hear a baby screaming and I, I should probably, that's go fine. attend to that but uh i'm disgusted with everybody and everything when it comes to uh, to what's coming out of the establishment entertainment uh thing like it, what a letdown all these dudes guns and roses rage, like the shit that i honestly grew up on thinking that there was like you know it's like wizard of oz you, you, yeah. like this you get to you get to the bottom of it it's just like you know these fucking snowflakes. I want to throw up on all of them. <laughs> just drown them up and I'll 
big pool of vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that's good. We'll, we'll talk about it more next time. All right, fuck them all. all right. uh, so anyway, yeah, check us out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, marvinmusic.bandcamp.com before before we get music, fa- before we get famous and we'll tell you what what we we'll, what we really yeah. like before we're gonna hang out with Billy. Uh, all right, talk to you soon. <laughs>